President Biden meeting with European leaders in Brussels to discuss trade and technology. The president touting NATO's unity yesterday at the NATO summit while also stressing the growing threats of Russia and China. Russia and China are both seeking to drive a wedge in our transatlantic solidarity. We're seeing an increase in malicious cyber activity. But our alliance is a strong foundation on which we can, our collective security and our shared prosperity can continue to be built. And I made a point to make clear that the U.S. commitment to Article 5, the NATO treaty, is rock solid and unshakable. It's a sacred commitment. NATO, NATO stands together. That's how we've met every other threat in the past. Joining me now, Fox News senior strategic analyst, General Jack Keane. Always a pleasure, General. Always a real honor that you're here. Your reaction to what you've heard out of President Biden after the G7 and then the NATO meeting? Well, a couple of things. First, uh, uh, Dan, it's great to be on the show here with you. Uh, First of all, on uh, dealing with the G7, I thought it was uh, laudatory that they did bring up China, which is the first time that's ever happened in, in, in terms of any consequence. I think the, the messages coming out, though, were not nearly as strong uh, a, as they could have been. It, it, it would have been far better when it came to COVID to really pin the rose on China in, in terms of its deception about the origin of it. And to go back to the WHO again and ask for another investigation, in my judgment, is kind of lame. We know full well that they're not going to conduct an independent investigation. I, I think the G7 could have called for an independent body uh, away from the WHO to do that investigation. But even, even more important than that, is the fact that there should have been a calling out of China for the spread of the coronavirus because we know full well that they shut down all domestic flights coming out of Wuhan City but permitted international flights to run for some period of time. And that is absolutely criminal behavior, on, on, uh, in my view, for sure. Though that was disappointing that the message wasn't stronger, uh, Dagan. And uh, in NATO, certain the solidarity that NATO represents is, is a good thing. It's the strongest and most successful political alliance in, in history, coming together and reinforcing each other against the threats that we're facing. Uh, the fact that China, again, is on the agenda is a very good thing, and it, it also shows the changing nature of the contours uh, of geopolitical achievements in the world and how China is seeking domination of its region and the world at large. Uh, NATO needs to shore up themselves there. There's a lot of disagreement, as you know, in NATO about China. Many of them uh, side with China because of the economic influence and the desire to do trade. Uh, I think pulling that kind of uh, cohesion together is going to be a challenge for, for the United States. I also think it's, it's, a, it's a failure on NATO's part not to demonstrate collectively that Russia is conducting massive cyber warfare against Western democracies to disrupt those dis democracies and to diminish the people's confidence in them, and with a primary focus on the United States. But European democracies are being hit as well. We have got to finally come to grips with how to deal with this phenomenon, and certainly NATO should take it on because it is an instrument of power that Russia is using in, in this conflict. And on that note, how does President Biden address that among myriad issues with Vladimir Putin tomorrow in this summit, if you will? Dana Perino said, why even call it a summit? Because it brings on kind of an element of grandeur to call it that. And you're not even going to have a joint press conference. Maybe that's a good idea or a bad idea. But how does Biden address this with Putin? And do we get anything that's concrete out of this meeting? Well, this was a meeting that uh, President Biden wanted, and in his own words, to determine if, if they can, at a time when the relationship is at an all-time low between Russia and the United States, to achieve a stable and predictable relationship on a number of issues. Remains to be seen, certainly, if that can be done. I think there are two central themes here. One is what Russia has been doing for 20 years under Putin, and that simply is to develop a sphere of influence 
over the former Soviet Union states that when the Soviet Union collapsed in 1991, many of those states joined NATO, the arch rival of the Soviet Union. And that has been a thorn in his side. And also, there are non aligned states out there as well. And what Putin has been doing is intimidating, harassing the former Soviet Union states that are in NATO, the Baltic states and Poland in particular. And that has been almost continuous. And second thing, for the non-aligned, non-NATO states, he's conducted military expansion into Georgia and also into Ukraine. Why? To prevent them from ever becoming part of NATO and achieving Western integration. This has to be put on the table as a central strategic theme that Putin is doing, and we have to demonstrate that we're not going to continue to tolerate this. The second thing is cyber warfare. We have to deal with Russia on cyber warfare, and it takes a couple of forms. The government hacking, for sure, and secondly, criminal cyber hacking, which is tolerated and sanctioned by Russia. This is a central issue, and it's a growing phenomenon, and unless we get involved in stopping it, it's going to continue. First of all, we should tell him every time a cyber attack is launched from Russia, whether it's government or criminal, we will launch a, count, a, a counter cyber attack against the infrastructure that launched that attack. We have the capability to do that, and we've done it in the past. It's been very successful. It was publicly announced that after the 2018 and 2020 elections, the United States did just that in shutting down Russian hacking, interfering with our elections. That has to be done. Second thing, we should hit them hard over sanctions when this takes place. And where it hurts, I'm talking about the oil and gas industry, and given the continuous hacking that has taken place in the United States to undermine our democracy, I think we have to hold Putin personally accountable, go after his wealth at, that he has with his cronies and his oligarchs, and begin to punish him personally. Otherwise, this just keeps going on, Dagan. We, Biden is going to issue tough words, so to speak, in dealing with Putin. He'll come back and tell the world, I've been tough on Putin. Putin will deflect that. He'll deny it. He's a master, master at it. And nothing will happen. He'll just keep coming after us. We have to take a stand here. Would it help if Joe Biden, well, one, do you think it's a good idea that he's not doing a joint press conference with Vladimir Putin? Because I said this yesterday, that you look like a weakling if you talk tough when you're not next to him. But if you're standing on stage with him and you kind of like soft pedal, uh, the, the fact Biden has called him a killer. So you have to say that you're a, a malign actor and we're not going to tolerate what's happening in terms of, as you pointed out, the cyber attacks. So is it a good idea that he's not on this stage doing a joint presser with him? Well, I think what, what's happening here is his handlers are just trying to protect him because clearly uh, he, he could be forgetful at times. We've seen that in some of the uh, public uh, press conferences he's had so far, and he's prone to gaffe. And, and I think they're, they're concerned that in, in the freewheeling nature of a press conference, uh, Putin could likely show him up. I, I absolutely believe, though, that the press conference should be held because it's a huge opportunity to internationally and publicly point a finger at Putin for what he is doing in that press conference, not just to his face one on one. And, and I think that that is a, a main reason for having that joint press, press conference. And certainly the Helsinki press conference that President Trump had was, I think, one of the lower points of, of his administration right. and how he handled that and, and certainly uh, supported Putin in that press conference. They met, that may have affected the Biden administration uh, as well, but I think it's a lost opportunity not to have it. General Jack Keane, you brought so much. You always do. We are so grateful for you being here. We will see you soon. Thank you so much.